This is ABC 15 Mornings. The threat of a Russian invasion. Begin with a significant barrage of missiles uh, and bomb attacks. The latest on the crisis in Ukraine. Trying to save money shopping. They've upped the prices on everything. As prices rise, it's becoming harder to find generic store brands. Burrow trying to keep it going, gets spun down, gets it away, and incomplete. Rams win. And now we are 363 days away to the Super Bowl coming right here to Arizona. Keeping things exciting. Feeling desirable to your partner is a basic human need. On this Valentine's Day, how to divorce proof a marriage. Cannot wait to share that story with you. I mean, it's, I found a study and then it led to this and that, and it will surprise you. You can patch things up if love's on the rocks this morning. I like that, how to resuscitate yes. that romance. Exactly. I love it, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning to you. We're having a moment here. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully your day's off to a great start. Happy birthday, Arizona. Kaylee O'Kelly here alongside Nick Saletti. Yeah, a lot of you watching the Super Bowl. So it might be a little bit of a rough morning. Maybe you can get a ton of sleep. It's okay. We're here for you this morning. Let's send things over to Nohalani Graf, who is in for Iris with that most accurate forecast. We're gearing up for another beautiful day, Nohe. Definitely. Show yourself some love with that coffee this morning. Something to put more pep in your step because it is going to be a great day and you will want to spend part of it outside if you can. Chilly start to the morning, though, so you probably want to layer up. We're in the 40s right now across most of the valley, mid 40s in Mesa, Glendale, and Goodyear, upper 40s in Scottsdale, 50s, though, in the Phoenix metro. As you're getting the kids ready for school this afternoon, know that by 8 o'clock we'll still be cool in the 50s, so probably a light sweater for them. They're going to shed those layers, though, by lunchtime when they're having recess outside because it'll be in the low 70s. Great weather. And then a warm afternoon, 80 degrees by 4 o'clock, so we're above average for this time of year. But then our Temperatures are going to change. We are switching gears this week. I'll talk about that coming up in that full most accurate forecast. But first, we want to check in with our Megan Thompson, who's been watching the roads on this Valentine's Day morning. Hey, hey Megan. good morning, Nohalani. Happy Valentine's Day to you and your sweetheart. That hubby of yours hopefully has got something waiting for you when you get home. I'm thinking the same thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> and happy birthday to Arizona. 110 years young as I take you to the I-17 and Thomas. You can see we got plenty of cars out there at this early hour on both sides sides of the roadway and a little bit of slowing is already beginning in that spot as well as the I-10. So let's look at some of it. 30 miles per hour is what you'll be traveling on the I-17 southbound as you're making your way right towards the stack. Right around 27 miles per hour after you pass the stack, you're looking good on the I-10 eastbound between the stack and the mini stack. And just a tiny bit of slowing on the I-10 eastbound to about 61 miles per hour as you are approaching the stack on those eastbound lanes. A wide view of your map shows otherwise we have nice green conditions at least for now. Here are those desert drive times. We are up to 20 minutes on the I-10 eastbound from the 303 to the mini stack and 12 minutes on the 51 and the 17. Let's get to our top headlines at 602. We're getting some new details on an early morning crash at 15th Avenue and Bethany home. You see that white car crashing into a street sign. The pole then falling on top of it. We're told there was another car involved in this crash, but the driver took off. Three minors were in the white car at the time. All of them are expected to be okay. New video of a serious crash in Tempe. It happened near Baseline and McClintock. A witness telling police a motorcyclist and a bicyclist collided. Serious injuries here are being reported. Officers are investigating to see if that motorcyclist was impaired. Scottsdale police investigating a deadly crash involving six people in two vehicles. One person died. The others were taken to the hospital. It all happened near McKellips and Miller Roads. Early Sunday morning, the cause is being investigated. A Phoenix firefighter recovering after being injured fighting a fire at two mobile homes. That fire started in one and then spread to a neighboring home east of Cape Creek Road and Pinnacle Peak. Two elderly people who live there were displaced. They're not hurt and workers were performing maintenance on one property before that fire started. Oh, pool and swimming season just around the corner, but the city of Phoenix may run into some trouble this summer because of a lifeguard shortage. ABC 15's Amelia Faviano is live at the Cortez Pool near 35th Avenue and Dunlap. Amelia, how many lifeguards does the city actually need? Nick, they need hundreds of people to be able to safely open all of the city's public pools this summer, like Cortez Pool here behind me, one of 29 they have in the city here. Of course, if they can't hire the number they need, that could mean fewer people will have access to a pool where they can cool off this summer. Fewer kids could learn how to swim. And of course, lifeguards are such an important part of keeping these pools safe. We have some 
wonderful lifeguards here this morning showing us a, a CPR demo for you. And of course, there are so many awesome benefits to being a local lifeguard, especially if you're looking for a, a fun summer job. Of course, you're working in your neighborhood, you're keeping your community safe, and it really does look great on a college application or even a job resume because it shows those strengths like teamwork, responsibility, leadership, all skills these uh, lifeguards are demonstrating right here. You'll also meet other dedicated people and the summer shifts can be flexible for you. So it is an ideal summer job for students. I spoke to the city's aquatic supervisor about why these lifeguards are so important to our community here in the Valley. Take a listen. This is something that is a service to our community. I'm passionate about water safety and teaching kids how to swim and ensuring that we have the services available for people to learn about water safety and how to stop the drownings that happen here in our, in our state. It's such an important role here. And of course, you need to be certified for certain parts of the job, like CPR, as you see these lifeguards doing here behind me. So there are courses you'll have to take if you want to be qualified for this job. Some of them actually start this month. So you'll want to go ahead and sign up as soon as possible. You are eligible if you're 15 years and older. Kaylee, great summer job Absolutely. for those high school students, college students who are home for the summer. Good way to get involved. Yep, and start early, right? So you can continue to make money yeah. year after year after year. Well, as students in the Kyrene School District get ready for school today on this Valentine's Day, they can keep the masks at home because they are now optional for students and staff members there. Keep in mind, masks, though, are required on the school bus. We do want to say congratulations to the L.A. Rams, the new Super Bowl champs. The Rams beating the Cincinnati Bengals 23 to 20. It was a late comeback for the Rams, yes. scoring a touchdown with less than two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. This is the first Super Bowl title for the Rams since 1999. And hopefully this trend, right, will continue into next year because the Rams are the second consecutive team to win and host the big game, Cooper Cup, named Super Bowl 56 MVP just days after being named Offensive Player of the Year. Yeah, really deserving of both yes. titles there. Hey, the countdown is now on for Super Bowl 57 right here in the Valley State Farm Stadium to host the next big game. And today, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell will join Super Bowl host committees from L.A. and Arizona to officially hand off the Super Bowl. Governor Doug Ducey, Michael Bidwell, and Larry Fitzgerald will all be part of this celebration. All right, we've been talking about Valentine's Day. Um, and you know, the pandemic's been really tough on a lot of relationships, which brings us to this. More women, it turns out, are blaming marital problems, relationship problems on bedroom boredom. That'll get your attention, right? Whoa. This morning, I know. We take a deeper look at ways to save your marriage, save your relationship before it falls apart. Forget the seven year itch. As more women make more money, the traditional roles of marriage seem to be changing. I think the power dynamics are influencing uh, what's happening within households. That is Dr. Emily Basha sharing more after a new study reveals more married women would cheat if there were no long-term risks. It's hard to go back once you've crossed that threshold and that line. This one also revealing when women say they're not in the mood, they don't want less action. What they really want is variety, novelty, and adventure. Compare that to the men in exclusive relationships for at least 12 years who said they are pretty happy having the same long-term partner. What can a man do? So feeling desirable to your partner is a basic human need. And I think if things start to feel stale in a relationship, maybe looking at exploring within safe parameters um, different ways that they can have experiences that are novel and exciting and help bring the pizzazz back in the relationship. To keep your marriage strong, Dr. Basha tells me never stop dating, never stop flirting with each other, find ways to create shared meaning, and when conflict does come up, try something she calls pre-forgiveness. Or maybe we're having a difficult conversations, uh, a difficult conversation ourselves, um, or it's maybe in the aftermath. And so then we'll ask for pre-forgiveness. 
and that's a deal the doctor has with her husband. She said it just kind of makes things easier if things get a little weird no matter where they are. Well, I look at it like a table and there's four legs to a table. This is one of those legs. It's a relationship, right? So if your relationship is missing one of those legs, like the table oh, kind of yeah. starts to Wobbles. wobble a little bit, yeah, right? It's so mm -hmm. true. Communication is key here. I like it. Thanks. Spicing wow. up ABC from two wow. mornings. I like it. <laughs> there we go. Hey, put that away. All right. Coming up next on ABC for Team Mornings, people secretly recorded when their meetings are over and they're no longer on a call. Zoom works to fix the issue for the second time. And is the Cactus League about to strike out again? The current Major League Baseball lockout has now become the second longest work stoppage in league history. I'm John Matteris. We've all seen prices rising lately on name brand products that we buy. But what about store brands? Or surprising findings coming up. Now let's take you live outside to view those current traffic conditions on the I-10. This is near 43rd Avenue. We'll get an updated look at Traffic Predictor to see what those average speeds will look like if you're going to head out the door in the next few minutes. It's 613. Want to catch up on your Monday morning headlines here? The United States says Russia has 130,000 troops staged near its borders with Ukraine. The Pentagon warning an invasion could happen this week. The U.S. has pulled most staff out of Ukraine, and all Americans there are being warned to leave the country. The busiest U.S. Canada border crossing is back open after protests against COVID 19 restrictions forced to closure. The Ambassador Bridge linking Detroit to Windsor shut down after a number of people attempted to block the crossing. Well, the San Francisco 49ers are dealing with ransomware. Cyber criminals claim to have stolen financial data from the pro football team. The FBI and Secret Service issuing an alert about black bite ransomware, saying it had compromised several U.S. businesses in recent months. And Zoom says it has fixed a bug that affected most Mac users. The glitch left microphones on, and this was even after a Zoom call ended. Can you imagine? Well, you have to update Zoom's latest Mac OS version to fix the issue. And it is the company's second attempt at fixing the problem. The first try, yeah, that happened late last year. As inflation forces us to cut corners, many have turned to store brands, but even those are getting more expensive. So what's behind the increase? Consumer reporter Jan Matteries gets us the answers. Many shoppers these days turn to store or house brands to save money. They're so popular that Mary Jackson finds them sometimes selling out. They're out of all the generic stuff because all the because everybody's buying it because they, they, they've upped the prices on everything. But Carol Pearson suspects even those generic brands are raising prices too. Are those cheap anymore or are those still getting pricey? Those are, those are pricey too. Even the house brand? Even the house brand, yeah. It can be tough to remember if the price of some store brand item you buy has gone up unless you save receipts. And we did. Our receipts from one Ohio store showed that since last September, store brand napkins that were $179 are now $199. Canned seltzer water that was $275 has since jumped to $399. Paper towels that were $379 are now $399 for the exact same item. And at one Missouri store we checked, milk prices shot up 20 cents. They couldn't keep it down forever, and that's why now we're starting to see these increased prices, regardless of if you're a national brand or a store brand. Kelly Goldsmith is a marketing professor at Vanderbilt University. And that leads to this price increase because everybody's backed up, everybody's dealing with labor shortages, everybody's dealing with supply chain shutdowns. And I will say these stores have really tried to prevent passing along that increase. But does this mean store brands will be the first to bring their prices back down? Walmart, Target and Kroger would not comment about prices to us, but Kelly said. These are well-managed, highly profitable companies. They want to make money by selling to you. So it's in their best interest to solve this problem. After all, the store brand makes sense only when it's cheaper than the big name brand. So retailers will keep trying to sell their own brands for a bit less so you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time. Sponsored by Accident Law Group. Good morning to you. I'm Megan Thompson taking a look at those current traffic conditions for you and some major slowing on the I-10 westbound. This is near Riggs Road. Your speed's dropping below five miles per hour at this point in the morning with that red building on your maps due to that crash staying in the East Valley. We also have a breakdown, a stalled vehicle, the Loop 202, the Red Mountain Freeway eastbound just after Priest is where that one's been reported. This is a live view of that scene. It's off to the left, which is really one of the 
worst spots that that vehicle could be. And luckily we have those flashing lights letting people know what's going on. You should move over at least one lane to give those folks some space. Here's a view of the Loop 101 Agua Fria and Pima looking good. The 17 giving us green conditions near the North Stack and similar story on the 51. As we zoom over to the I-10 eastbound, really just pockets of slowing right now as you're heading out the door. Overall, you're looking good, including on the 17. It's just after you pass the 17 heading toward the stack that you'll slow down just a little bit. As we look at traffic predictor, I-10 eastbound from the Loop 303 to the mini stack right around that 7 a.m. time frame, that average speed will drop just below 60 miles per hour, which I think is fantastic news for us right now. I-17 southbound from the 101 to the stack. Traffic predictor has us right around 52 miles per hour on average at that 7 a.m. hour. And then Nohalani, the 51 from the 101 to the mini stack in the green right around 64 miles per hour. Hey, not bad. We're cruising right along on this Monday morning. It seems like for the most part, you're probably going to want to click on the heater as well as you get in the car, at least at this hour. And especially if you're in the high country, we've got several freezing spots up north. We're in the teens to start the day in Flagstaff, 16 in Winslow, Window Rock dropping down to 11 degrees this morning. Sholo now sitting at the freezing mark. We're in the 30s in Prescott and Payson. 40s in Sedona and out in Quartzsite this morning, as well as Gila Bend and Casa Grande. Across the valley, we have some 40s as well. It's 41 in Santan Valley, 43 in Gilbert, 41 in Maricopa, 48 in Goodyear, and 45 in Surprise and Buckeye. But we do have 50s in the central portion of the valley. So as we look ahead to the rest of your Valentine's Day planner, a cool start to the morning, but it is going to shape up to be a gorgeous day. So you know what? Sometimes just taking your sweetheart outside to do something nice. If you can, maybe a hike at lunchtime or a walk around the park or wait until the evening hours we will be in the 60s by 10 and then we cross over into the 70s right at lunchtime at noon and that really will be our sweet spot as far as the forecast goes this afternoon because then we do get a little warmer we'll work our way into the 80s today and that's going to happen right around three four o'clock this afternoon that does put us about 10 degrees above the average for this time of year we should be sitting in the 70s at this point in february so 81 pretty much much across the valley today. More 80s to our south, 81 in Casa Grande, 83 in Gila Bend. Warmest spot is Yuma at 85 degrees. Low 80s through the lower Colorado River Valley. Central portion of Arizona, we're in the mid to upper 60s, falling just short of 70 in Sedona. And north of the rim, Flagstaff is going to stay in the upper 50s, but we're looking at 60s at the Grand Canyon, Page, Heber, and Sholo. Now the breezes today will be light, 5 to 10 miles an hour, but they really start to pick up tomorrow. Here in the valley, around 15 to 20 mile an hour winds. Gusts could be up to 25 miles an hour and then they'll calm and be more mild around 5 to 10 the rest of the week. That's because high pressure is dropping. Low pressure is moving in along with the storm system from the Pacific Northwest, and that is going to bring a slight chance of rain to the valley forecast, but more likely we'll be looking at snow in the high country and also much cooler temperatures statewide. So here in the valley by Wednesday, our temps plummet into the mid 60s again, so we'll go below the average before rebounding back into the 70s for the second half of the week and in the Flagstaff area. 30% chance of snow in the forecast late Tuesday into Wednesday and your highs are going to drop into the 30s for the middle of the week. Okay, thick socks and an extra blanket on the bed. Hey, if you're looking for something fast, fun and heart pounding this Valentine's Day at 625, we may have found it for you. That's your Monday morning bulletin board. And nearly six months after an explosion at a Chandler library, it's going to open its doors once again ahead at 635. We're live inside the Sunset Library. At 645, do you shop at Fry's? Do you use TikTok? Or are you ever on Zoom meetings? If the answer is yes to any of these questions, you could have some money coming your way. Plus, it's a perfect week to get outside and enjoy yourself. At 649, we deliver that super seven-day forecast. A mission to save lives through a teen driving school. The free proactive program is called Breaks. Teens going through three modules at Phoenix Raceway this past weekend. Crash avoidance, which also has our slalom course. Then we have panic braking, which includes our distraction course, which is huge for teens, and our drop wheel section. And last but not least, which is everybody's favorite is, most of the time, is skid pad. 
In 2008, Doug Herbert, a professional drag racer, got the call. He lost his two sons in a car crash. Herbert was in Phoenix competing at the time. He turned tragedy into a life saving tool for so many families. So far, more than 100,000 students have gone through the breaks program. There will be more events this fall. We will continue to put that information online for you at ABC15.com. Okay? Megan, thank you for that. 625 in the market for a new car. Maybe don't buy used. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics says used car and truck prices are up more than 40% in a year, while new car prices are up only 12%. So, right, I mean, the old adage has been it depreciates so much yeah. after you drive a new car off the lot. Maybe not so yeah. much anymore. Things have been so weird the past couple of years when it comes to cars. All right, lovers, this is for you. Do you and your Valentine have the need for speed? If you do, this morning's bulletin board is just for you all day long. This is a great deal. Octane Raceway is going to offer buy one, get one free go-kart racing, virtual reality games, even appetizers helping you take care of your entire date. Velocity VR is a completely immersive experience, and there are four adventures to choose from, including this one. It's a zombie outbreak. <laughs> just get there between 11 a.m. and 10 p.m. Octane Raceway, in case you don't know, it's just off the 101 there on the east side of the valley, Talking Sick Way near Salt River Fields, adding some thrill to your Valentine's Day. That's today's bulletin board. Next at 630, any hope of spring training games starting on time? Uh, pretty much over. As the lockout continues, the Cactus League might not see a single pitch. I'm Joe St. George in Washington. Many states are relaxing their pandemic restrictions. Will the federal government soon follow? We take a look at the likelihood and why some public health experts say not so fast. And nearly six months after an explosion next door, the Chandler Sunset Library is officially reopening to the public today. We're going to take you inside. Plus, we have a warm Valentine's Day ahead, but we're already tracking that next storm, which means breezes and cooler temperatures are coming. I'm breaking it all down for you at 630.